Now I'm going to talk about several topics in Polymer. Uh, first topic is about Carotter's equation. In the lecture slides, uh, they express the xn, number average degree of polymerization, as n naught over n, or initial over final. So let's consider this case. N so AB monomer becomes AB polymer. Initial N0 reaction, I put minus X and plus X. Final, this is N. So X in this case is N0 minus N. And I could also express X with as P times N0 and P is progress so if like the progress is 100% that means all X that means X equal to N0 and there won't be any monomers left so if P is 50% that means the progress is 50% so based on this we can write rewrite it into like this so reaction is P and not final is N not minus P and not or N not over bracket 1 minus P and this is equal to N so I could say XN becomes like this And for connecting with equilibrium constant, we use the same I uh, minus p naught minus p naught plus p naught plus p naught equilibrium constant here and just products over reactance. And then if you notice, this is squared over squared, so I can say k half or root k equals p n naught over n naught times 1 of minus p or p over 1 minus p from previous equation uh, the xn equals 1 over 1 minus p we can make it into p equal 1 over 1 over xn substitute p inside in here so we get like this and I can rewrite the 1 over xn here becomes times xn so I get the equation from the lecture slides next they consider equation where the monomers A and B are different so it's the initial is NA naught and the B is NB naught uh, and in the lecture slides they say NB is excess so R NA over NB will be less than 1 and the progress would be uh, like the reaction would be minus P and A because the progress depends on the A when uh, the P is 100% that is A already reacted completely it will stop so the final will be and A not 1 minus P and in B it will be and B not minus P and A not and I rearrange this into and A equals R and B not from the first definition XN is equal to initial over final so it will be and A not plus and B naught that is this plus this over the final 
and I, I expand this and a1 minus p and just rearrange it so I got minus 2p and a here I put this equation in here and I just cancel all the nb so I got the equation from the lecture notes so when stoichiometric r is 1 and that's just the definition and then next is about osmotic pressure so if you remember the ideal gas equation PV and RT it's the same just use pi instead of P and there is I I called a uh, fan Hoff factor and that's for mainly for ionics like NaCl it will be Na plus and Cl minus I will be 2 H2SO4 2H plus SO4 mi 2 minus I will be 3 if like a weak acid so this will be very not completely 2 I could be like 1.2 or 1.1 or something else if it's no dissociation I will be 1 and mostly in polymer there won't be any dissociation so just consider I to be 1 and moles are mass over molar mass and just put V here so it will be pi equals RT over MN that is the average molar mass M over V and this is concentration now uh, units is quite challenging in this part because sometimes it uh, the problem use grams per liter and uh, osmotic pressure is in the atmosphere you can either use R as 0 0.082 ATM liter mole minus 1 Kelvin minus 1 or you can convert pi from ATM to Pascal that uh, the conversion is in the data booklet so yeah no worries to memorize it and you convert C into kilograms per meter cube and usually in the problems it's like you are given all the phi and all the C so you just measure the gradient and you'll find the average molar mass next is about degree of crystallinity that is on lecture 7 actually this discuss more about for the tutorial 2 question 1 so polymer consists of crystalline crystalline and amorphous part and the degree of crystallinity is the mass percentage of crystalline so the, it's MC over MT crystalline over total times 100 percent and mass is density times volume so it's density crystalline volume crystalline over density times volume total and because it consists of only crystalline and amorphous so the mass total is mass crystalline plus mass amorphous the rho times volume total equals rho times volume of crystalline rho of amorphous and volume of amorphous and I divided everything with VT so this is uh, the volume fraction of the crystalline or VC over VT you can arrange this equation like this so XA plus XC is equal to 1 so XA is 1 minus XC you expand this 
and then you from right hand side the row A change to the left so it's row minus row A equals row C minus row A times XC so we get XC is like this and we substitute back in so we get this formula and then uh, this is about the TM lecture 7 slide 2425 uh, they say first is the main chain stiffness if it's contain O oxygen the flexibility will increase and the melting point will decrease if there is benzi benzene it is a stiff group so the melting point will increase second uh, they put interchain bonding and they only discuss about the hydrogen bond so this is an example of hydrogen bond so hydrogen bond is because when hydrogen bonded with either N, nitrogen, oxygen or fluorine this will become partial positive very positive because this is very negative this atom is very negative so this is very positive so when they meet another negative atoms they will create a strong column interaction that's called hydrogen bond okay so in here the hydrogen connects uh, bonded with nitrogen so this is negative the hydrogen will be very positive and the hydrogen uh, interacts with the other oxygen negative so strong positive interacts with strong negative it will create a strong interaction and this will increase TM because it increases the stiffness of these two chain if the carbon here I put X when X increase it will be more flexible and the melting point will decrease to illustrate this uh, you can see like imagine this is a stiff this create makes the bond stiff and if I have a chain that is long here this part will be flexible and this will in decrease the t melting point like if it's only small amount it will be stiff okay. and the third part they discuss about the side group you can either have long and flexible side group and that would decrease the melting point or you can have large bulky or polar either for example benzene that would be stiff and like sorry increase stiffness CL that is uh, very negative so it will create a strong dipole dipole interaction and OH that would create hydrogen bond so it will increase the melting point and uh, on lecture 8 they say about factor influencing TG actually the melting point and the 
glass transition quite connected so you can use the melting point consideration for TG I just want to kind of highlight the forces like hydrogen bonds in the side groups like OH polar like the CL you create deep dipole dipole interaction or pi pi interaction like benzene actually contains with pi pi bond and it will make pi pi interaction and this is about the tutorial 2 last question question number 5 so uh yeah uh, yeah so the f mm. Nylon is the highest. Uh, so the question asks for the TG, like which one is higher, which one is low, lower. Rank them. So nylon would be the first because hydrogen bond, and then the second would be polystyrene because of the benzene, pipe interaction and rigid. Uh, the third and the fourth would be polyphenyl alcohol, hydrogen bond and dipole dipole interaction. The fifth one would be this, cis polybutadiene because this double bond is rigid. The six will be polyethylene, seven would be atactic polypropylene. I actually don't know why, but in the lecture slides it says like that. And the last one would be PEO, polyethylene oxide, because oxygen is very flexible.